So hello and welcome to everybody. Thank you so much for being here and hello to those of you who are listening to this recording. Today we're talking about three tips for building a successful VA business. My name is Susan Mershon. I am the Techie Mentor in case you don't know me. And I just want to say a big thank you for taking time to either listen to this or be here live. So let's take a look at what we're going to talk about today. We'll do a quick introduction for those of you who don't know me so you can get a quick snippet of my background and who I am and what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to talk to you really quick and give you some tips on, you know, getting out of your own way and getting out of analysis paralysis, how to gain confidence in yourself and what you have to offer to the world, changing the employee mindset, building your business while employed, and just some real quick do's and don'ts on, you know, things that you should concentrate and things you shouldn't waste your time on. And then we'll have a, an open Q&A. So that's me. <laughs> Um, I am Susan Mershon. As I mentioned, I am the Techie Mentor. Um, I am a, I would say, a former VA. I still have a VA business, but the reason I say former is that I am no longer taking clients. I do have um, several clients that I've had for many, many years that I continue to work with. Um, so that's why I say I'm former. Uh, I built a very successful virtual assistant business while being employed. So I know what that's like. Uh, and I also built my business from the ground up all by myself, so I learned the hard way. Uh, I come out of a corporate career that spans over 20 years, a long time. And the, all of my career was in IT, so I am a computer geek. So that's why I do both coaching of virtual assistants, but I also train virtual assistants. So I've taken the knowledge that I've built over the five years that I was a, a virtual assistant and I've turned them into a coaching and training business that helps VAs, you know, learn what they need to build the business and have the technical skills in order to have um, higher rates. If you want all the gory details about me and my uh, background, you're welcome to go to techieminner.com and look under why me. It'll give you the whole story of, of why I decided to leave my corporate career and become a virtual assistant. So, I won't bore you with that now, so let's just go ahead and get right into the details. And for those of you who've not been to one of my free trainings before, this is a very interactive presentation. You do not need to wait to the end of the course to ask any questions. I welcome comments as well. So feel free to type those in the GoToWebinar control panel there. There's a questions area. Feel free to type in any comments or questions and I'll grab them as soon as I can. All right, for analysis paralysis, this is something that, um, this is not a, a term that I coined, it's, it's one that's been out <clears throat> for quite a while, but it is something that I see a lot of virtual assistants do. I did this as well. I love to research. I could spend months just researching things because I keep thinking I'm gonna find more great information that I really need before I can take any action. And this kind of kept me stuck for a long time until I realized I had to get out of my own way. So analysis paralysis means all you're doing is ana analyzing or researching. You're not doing anything. So you're spending hours researching what's a virtual assistant, what kind of skills do virtual assistants need or do they have? How do they get clients? How do you market? Um, what kind of technology do you need? So on and so forth. And so you spend an enormous amount of time and energy just doing research. But the issue with that is, is that you're not getting anywhere. You're, you're gaining knowledge, which isn't a bad thing, but you're not actually getting yourself out there and building your business. So if you're like me, like I said, I'm huge research and I still do this even today. I have to really watch myself because I can get carried away. Um, if you find yourself doing things similar to this, then you really need to have some kind of an action plan to know when to stop researching and start implementing. Because if you don't implement, you're not going to have a business. You got a lot of research, but no business. So most people spend time researching, you know, what it does it take to be a virtual assistant. And I'll be honest with you, it takes a lot. It's a lot of hard work. So if you think this is a, one of those rich, get, uh, rich, quick schemes, it's not. It truly is a lot of work. And you have to be willing to invest what it takes to be successful. I've had um, coaching clients that really took the time to look at how much it took to have a VA business and a successful one and they changed their mind, which, uh, you know, more power to them. I'm proud that they came forward and said, you know, this isn't for me. So just be aware that it is something that takes a lot of hard work, but 
the rewards are just as big. I mean, you, you put in the hard work, you get big rewards. People look at what, you know, what skill sets do I really need to have in order to be a success? And, and to be honest with you, in my opinion, every business needs a virtual assistant. They really do, whether they're brick and mortar or virtual, it doesn't matter. Everybody has something to bring to the table. We're all unique and we all have something that someone is looking for. So skill sets are really going to vary. You could have been, you know, an executive assistant for, for 20 years. And the skills that you have from that are huge and they are in need. Or you could be like me. Uh, I was, as I mentioned, in IT. My last gig was a, an IT project manager. So I have project management skills. So that would be one skill set. So my point is, is we all have skill sets. So you don't want to compare yourself to others. And that happens when you start doing a lot of research. Everybody is unique. And all skill sets are truly needed because there's so many different types of businesses. You really need to know, you know, the income. Now you can go out and search and see what other VAs are charging, but a lot of VAs don't put their rates on their sites. Like I never put my rates on my sites. That's a personal choice. That's something that you can decide if you want to do or not. And there's, that's not right or wrong. It's just a choice, but you really need to know, you know, an average of what most VAs are charging depends on their skill sets. And then, you know, what's the expenses? There are expenses. It is a very inexpensive business to start compared to like a franchise or something that truly needs an office, but there are still startup expenses and you have to know that you can't just think everything is going to be free because it's not, you're going to have to invest. So people spend time researching all of these, and this is not obviously everything, but this is just a snippet of what people spend a lot of time researching. And in order to get out of analysis paralysis, you have to, to take some actions. You have to set a deadline. So, you know, if I'm going to research skill sets for VAs, I need to set a deadline to say, okay, I'm going to do it for, for two days. And then at the end of that second day, I need to stop and I need to create a list of action items based on the research that I did and say, okay, here are the things that I'm going to implement. And then I need to set priorities on that. So it's real important that you realize that you have a research problem like me. You set a deadline and you create action items so you can implement whatever it is you've just researched. And then set priorities. So if you, you've researched several things, you're probably going to just want to um, chunk it down. In other words, just take one action at a time. So if you've been looking at, you know, what type of website should I have as a virtual assistant, which, by the way, <clears throat> if you're a VA, you need a website. Um, you know, if you're looking at that, you're thinking, OK, what type of website do I need? So you go out and you search websites and you realize you need a WordPress website because that's really what your clients are going to have anyways. So you you probably should have one as well. Point is, is then you figure out, okay, here's what I need to do. I need to write the content for my website. Um, I'm going to need to not only write the website, but I'm also going to need to figure out, you know, where I need to get hosted. It, it, my, my point is, is there's several steps behind that. And that's really where it works to your favor. If you, if you write it all down, give it a deadline, and then set the priorities. And every step forward is a step in the right direction. And you should celebrate each one of those accomplishments. Sorry. And another thing you can do when you, you're just analyzing, analyzing, and you're not making any progress is just take a break. Walk away. This is one of the best things you can do as an entrepreneur. When you get frustrated, you're tired, you're not thinking correctly, it's best just to stop and walk away because you can come back and the Problem's still going to be there or the issue's still going to be there, but it really does give you some time to reflect, to clear your mind, and then come back and tackle it with a fresh set of eyes. So unplug, walk away, sleep on it. That's really good advice. Exercise, meditate, get some fresh air, go for a walk. Excuse me, whatever works well for you, but you really do sometimes just have to step away from your business. And analysis paralysis is one of those things that you need to step away from and come back when you're feeling better. Um, if you're like me, I'll just keep working and then I make really silly mistakes, right? And I'm like, oh, you know, I should have stopped working because I typed that wrong, got the time wrong, I got whatever it might be incorrect because I was tired and I was pushing through. So it's good to take a break. So those are some tips on analysis paralysis. I mean, it's great to research. You really should know what you're getting into if you're new to the VA world, uh, but you really need to take action on what your research provides. 
and then make sure you start moving forward if you decide that VA is the way you want to go or whatever direction you want to go. Confidence is another thing. And, you know, I was a corporate career woman my entire life. Um, so when I decided to leave corporate and become a VA, you know, confidence was something that everybody has to deal with because it's a new um, you're out of your comfort zone. It's a new area that you may not been in before. So whenever you step out of your comfort zone, there may be a confidence issue that you need to address. And this is something, again, I see quite often. The best advice I can give you is, you know, find yourself a coach or a mentor. And I'm not, you don't have to pay all the time for a coach or a mentor. There are people out there in the VA world and we're a very giving group. If you haven't figured that out already, you know, ask, Ask somebody. The answer is always, always no anyways until you ask, but you may be able to find a coach or a mentor who's willing to take you on to help you. I I take on um, one new mentor a month, uh, not a month, a quarter. And that is something that I do just because I want to. They're not paying me for my time. I give it freely. And I'm not the only one who does that. So my point is, is find somebody that you can connect to because there's lots of great coaches and mentors in the VA world. Find one that that you connect with because we all have similar programs, right? But you need to find somebody that works well for you. So <clears throat> reach out to somebody that you think would be a great coach or mentor for you and ask. Get some training, some business training, some technology training, whatever it might be, because training is really going to help build your confidence. And there are lots of pro, uh, training programs out there as well. And the same thing, find somebody that that resonates with you and, and go into their programs and learn what you can, because it really will help your confidence. Join support groups. Um, and there's lots of them. And and support groups, I mean, via VA groups or, or other people that do similar work that, that you do. Now, I actually have three different groups, and that's why I put these up here. I have a group in, a group in LinkedIn that's all virtual assistants. It's called Virtual Assistant Startups. If you're not, if you're not part of it, you know, think about becoming part of it. It is a great group. Um, we share a lot of the same information there as we do on Facebook. Facebook has a similar group called Virtual Assistant Tips and Tricks, and so does Google+. Plus. Now, the reason I give you these three is because you may hang out on more of these one more than the other. You might be in LinkedIn more than you're in Facebook, or you might be in Google+. Plus. So I'd love for you to join and get into the conversation. These are my groups, but there are other people in there that give advice. There are other coaches. There are other mentors. As I said, we're a very giving group of people. And if you go in there, they will help prop you up, give you support, and get you moving in the right direction. Because face it, being an entrepreneur or a business owner, you're always going to be stepping outside your comfort zone. So there might be times when you need a little boost in your confidence. And it's okay to ask because we've all been there. We know what it's like. So make sure you join some support groups, whether they're mine or not. If you go into any one of these, Facebook, LinkedIn, or, or, or Google+, Plus, you can search for groups and you can join multiple groups. You'll find those a lot of the same people are in a lot of the groups, but that's okay. Okay, so get in there and have a conversation. Let people know you need some support and they'll be happy to help you and move you on your way. Biggest thing you cannot be afraid of is to fail. If you're going to be afraid of failure, you're never going to make it. Sorry to be blunt, but that's that's true. You have to put yourself out there. You have to push yourself outside your comfort zone and you just have to do it. And if you fail, don't look at it as a failure. Look at it as a learning experience. It's all in your perspective, right? So if if something doesn't work, well, go, okay, well, that didn't work. Try something else. Uh, it's not a failure. It's a learning experience. Okay. So if you, if you twist it around in your mind, so it's not a failure that it's a positive instead of a negative, it really helps you keep moving forward. Okay. And as Nike says, you know, just do it. You're going to have to do it. Luckily, I'm a very deadline driven person. So when I set a deadline, you know, I work to get it done, even if I'm uncomfortable with it. Um, and that's what works for me. So you kind of have to work, find what works for you. Okay, so we talked about analysis paralysis and how that's something that you can really, um, you know, kind of get lost in. And social media is another one of those things that you can kind of get lost in during your day. Just make sure that you understand that you just need to have some action coming out of your your research. And then your confidence, as you as you start to do more and more, like that first client that you get, you might be going, oh, got a new client. And you're like, woohoo, this is great. But then you're like, oh, God, now what do I do? 
you know, there's a little shake in your confidence because you're outside of your comfort zone. And that's okay. You just kind of dive in and push forward. Don't worry about making mistakes. You know, we all do. It's part of life. Just fess up to them, say, oops, sorry, um, and, and move on. But you just have to do it. You have to get that first client and you have to keep moving forward in order for your business and to be a success. And so that brings us to mindset. And when it comes to mindset, I mean, mindset really is the key to everything in life. Bottom line, what you think you are, you are. If you think you're going to be a success, you're success, you're going to be a success, then you will be. And if you think you're going to fail, well, guess what? Same thing. This was something that I learned when I, you know, I had no idea about this when I was in my little corporate world. But I quickly learned this when I stepped out to be my own best friend, so to speak, because you can also be your own worst enemy, as I'm sure everybody is aware of. So mindset really is, you know, you are what you think. That's simple. So if you think you can't do something, well, then you're setting your setup self up to not be able to do it. And it is kind of one of those games you have to play with yourself. And maybe game isn't the right word, but maybe you, know, you have to realize that you have to stop and you have to say, okay, I can do this and I will muddle through and I will do what I can to be a success or whatever words resonate with you. So just remember those thoughts in your head, they are truly going to make you either a success or not. So you have to learn to listen to what it's saying. Mindset is the key to your success. And I cannot stress that enough. And, and there's probably a reason each and every one of you decided to do what you do today which is called your why. There is a reason why you are doing what you do today. So my quick story, in case you don't know, is uh, my husband and I were blessed with a very late in life baby <clears throat> who was not expected. Um, and as I mentioned, I was a corporate career woman. I worked in IT, which is a, a male dominated field. And when I came back from maternity leave, I had a wonderful, you know, three months off. And I came back from my maternity leave. I was treated very differently than I was before. I left. Um, and that didn't set well with me. And, you know, before I went on maternity leave, I was managing multi-million dollar software development projects, um, international, right? And these were two and three year long projects. And I had done many and I was very successful. But when I came back, it was like, I didn't know how to do anything anymore. They wouldn't give me any big projects. They gave me little piddly projects, but I could never get a straight answer as to why, because nothing had failed. Um, it was just that I came back and had an infant at home. And so they figured I wouldn't be as reliable. And this is Susan's words. I don't know this. I never said this, but that's what I felt. Um, and at that point, I thought, you know what? I don't need this. I do not need to be worried about, you know, having a job. And not only that, I'm a horrible employee. I was a horrible employee if I didn't have something to do. I was not good when I was bored. I needed to be, you know, I needed to be busy. So I started researching things that I could do to, um, come home. And another driving factor was, you know, I had an infant and he had a nanny. I mean, he had a very, you know, was very well taken care of, but I just didn't want him to have to go through um, daycare like my first son did. I thought, well, that'd be kind of cool if I could be home and I could be working from home because I have a lot of skills I could use. Anyways, long story short is I figured out that virtual assistant was for me. And then I started to build my business while I was still a corporate person. But my why is because I didn't want to work for anybody anymore. I did not want to work for somebody who, in my opinion, knew less about the department that really I ran, but she paid, was paid three times as much as I was. And I actually did all the work. So that's my why. And so when I got frustrated and disgusted and angry and overwhelmed, I would stop and think, okay, why am I doing this again? And it would come to me like, you know what? I'm not working for anybody else. I would rather live under a bridge than go back to work in a corporate America. That so failure was not an option for me. So my point is you need to figure out what your why is because everybody has one, whether it's, um, you know, you don't want to work for somebody else. You want more freedom. You have kids at home, whatever it might be. And that why is what's going to keep you motivated and focused when you have bad days because you're going to. We all do. Um, and you want to come back to that. OK, so you're again talking about mindset. You want to keep that why in the forefront of your mind every time you have a hiccup or a setback. Um, and it will keep you motivated and focused. And the biggest thing is don't listen to the voices in your head. They're, you know, those excuses, the fear, oh, you know what? There's too many V, you know, there's millions of VAs out there. Why would anybody want to work with me? Well, that's pooey. That's, that's not true because VAs are a relationship-based business. 
my first client um, is still, you know, actually she's not a client anymore, but she, her and I split after about over four years together because she was going a different direction and she saw I was going a different direction. But my point is I had her for four years. We had a relationship to this day. I still, we're still friends. It is a very relationship based business. So yeah, there may be millions of VAs, but not each one of us are unique. Each one of us brings a different skill set to the table. So don't let those excuses, the fear, don't let it deter you from doing what it is that you truly want to do. And my favorite quote is, you know, don't believe everything you think. It's always much worse in your mind than it truly is when it happens or if it even happens. Okay. So mindset is really key to your success. These are three simple rules. And I have these penned on my bulletin board because they're so true. If you never go after what you want, you'll never have it. Let's face it. It's not just going to fall in your lap. You have to work for what it is. You have to go after what it is that you want. If you want to be a millionaire, then you need to go after it. If you do not ask, the answer will always be no. And that's, a, I mean, a lot of people forget that, you know, they think it's no. Well, ask. If you think it's already no, then what do you have to lose? And if you do not step forward, you will always be in the same place. If you're struggling right now, today, with getting clients or marketing or figuring out how to run your business, until you figure out how to move forward, your six months is going to go by and you're in the same place that you are today. So you have to continue to move forward. So I love those three simple rules. And that can be in any aspect of your life, not just your business. Okay. Employed entrepreneur also plays into mindset. I, as I said, I was an employee my entire life. Um, I never, ever thought about being my own boss, ever until the, the story I just shared with you a few moments ago. Um, but it is a totally different mindset. I mean, I was so ingrained to being a corporate employee or a small business employee um, that, you know, I, I had to be at work at a certain time. I had to leave it. I had to you know leave at a certain time. Luckily, my lunch, I could take whenever I wanted, but I, you know, I had to take lunch. But if I had to leave my office, go to a doctor's appointment, take my kids somewhere, whatever, I had to, you know, I had to get permission, basically. Um, but when you're your own boss, you don't have to have permission. You get to tell your clients, I'm unavailable. So it is a completely different mindset. And this was the hardest thing for me to grasp. It took me so long to unlearn all the behavior I had been ingrained with for 20 plus years as an employee. You have to understand that you're the boss and that it just took so long for me to sink in. And actually one of my clients finally stopped and told me, Susan, stop it. You don't work for me. That's what she actually told me. You do not work for me. I do not need the level of details that you give me. If you're not available, then just tell me that. I don't need to know where you're going for how long, what you're doing. I don't need to know that. And I was like, oh my God, it's like somebody hit me upside the head with a board. I'm like, she's right. I don't need to share that kind of, and that was like a turning point for me. So I was lucky enough that she stopped and finally said, I'm, I'm tired of you telling me this stuff. I don't need to know it. And I'm sure you're telling your other clients and they probably are saying, why does she keep saying this? So just remember you're the boss, the, the buck stops with you, so to speak. You get to decide who you want to work with, what you want to do, when you want to do it, where you want to do it, how you want to do it and how much you want to be paid. Now, all of that is usually determined when you have a job, you lose all of that, right? You don't get to choose those things. I mean, you may get to choose what, what job you have and how much you make. But other than that, you don't really get to pick the team members that you work with or the coworkers that you have. You don't sometimes get to pick who you work with or who you work for or the hours that you work. Um, all of that is, is pretty much dictated to you when you're an employee. When you're the boss, you know, you get to choose all this. And I still have problems some days thinking, oh, you know what? I really need to be in my office. But I'm thinking, why? <laughs> I don't really have a meeting this early this morning. But it's just, I still have that behavior from all those years that sometimes creeps back up on me. So just remember, you know, part of being an entrepreneur, uh, your own boss, is that you get to make all the decisions. Now, remember, you make a bad decision. There's nobody else to blame but yourself. But that's okay. It's a learning experience. This is all new. Being an, an entrepreneur, and whatever shape or form you're in is truly a learning experience. And it's, it's a great one, especially if you like to learn like myself. Oh, wow. I'm kind of going through this too quickly. Does anybody have any questions or anything before I take a break here for a second? Are you guys finding this information valuable? 
you know, am I sharing some insights that maybe you had not heard before? Jan, thank you. Susan, I'm so glad to hear you say to just push on and that it takes a while to get up and going. I started my VA business two years ago and all I heard and saw a lot of existing VAs separating themselves by letting others know that they are not new to being a VA. Even though I had over 15 years experience as an executive assistant, my skills expertise suddenly did not seem enough. I had no confidence. If someone was on the line, I hope they will just continue moving forward no matter what. Just because someone has more time at it than you does not necessarily equal better. That's good. So having the confidence and persistence to move forward is very important. Oh, Jan beautifully said, beautifully said. I'm so glad. You know, it's one thing to hear me say it, right? But it's so good to have somebody else say it. So thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Terry Mack, yes. Okay, good. Marilyn, love this. I worked in corporate America for 30 years and your story is my story. Being out of my comfort zone is life changing. Yes, it is, isn't it? But it's a, it's a, it's a fun thing. Angela, confidence is the biggest issue when you start out. Yeah, and you know what? Do not compare yourself to others. Do not listen. You can be your own worst enemy because you start reading every everybody else's stuff. Oh my God, look what she's doing. Everybody's here for a reason. You have your own path. Find your path and walk it because you may be at step one and the person you're comparing yourself to is at step 30. There is no comparison. You have to be really careful of that. Marilyn, I've totally been in analysis paralysis, too much research and not enough action. That is so calm. Uh, good. So I'm glad that everybody's had um, some information that worked well for them. And, you know, please feel free to share because there are others here that you'd be surprised that are in the same place that you are. Okay. So I'm going to do just a freebie real quick. And my free giveaway today, and I'm just going to close my eyes and pick somebody from the list of names that is here live. Um, it's just going to give you a, a free 30 minute coaching session with me. Um, and we can, you know, talk about whatever you want, however you want to, however you want to use it. It can be on, you know, coaching. It could also be on training if you need, because I do technology as well. So I'm going to close my eyes and I'm just going to pick somebody. So um, drum roll, if everybody wants to do a little drum roll to themselves. And Gail, your drum roll, you're actually the person I clicked on. <laughs> so Gail, congratulations. You won 30 minutes of my time to use as needed. And I will um, contact you after the um, program. And I'll just shoot you an email. And we can set it up for whenever's convenient, okay? So congratulations to you. You are certainly welcome. All right, so good. We got some great information. Let's keep um, moving forward. Thank you again, everybody, for your comments. I appreciate them. So building while employed. And this is something that a lot of us do. Okay, a lot of us don't, you know, well, I guess it depends. Um, you know, the economy has been in the news for years. A lot of people are, you know, being let go. And so they, they have to find a way to make ends meet. And this is one great direction to go. Take take away the ability for other, other people to, you know, to really rule your life by a job. Take it and, and put it into your own hands. And, and then it, it just gives you so much more um, freedom to know that it's, it's up to you and you make the decisions and you, you can make as much money as you want or as little as want. You can work as much as you want or as little as you want. You, you determine your own fate, so to speak. So building while, while employed, like I said, I, I was building my business, um, while I worked a full-time, you know, 50 hour corporate gig and I had an infant at home. So I don't want to hear anybody say they can't do this. And I have another son and I married and all those good stuff. So, and I was the breadwinner in the family. Um, so I, I did it, but you have to truly be committed, right? You have to be committed to get it done because it is a lot of work, but it's not forever. It's just a phase to get you to the next phase. So it's, you know, phase one or phase A. So you have to be truly committed to do whatever it takes to get it done. And it took me mm, nine months, I think before I was able to leave my corporate job. And I actually left too soon because I didn't do enough homework to really realize what pieces I had missed, but I made it work. Um, 
So you have to be committed. You have to do what it takes. You have to be very disciplined. You have to have a schedule. You need to stick to it. So what I did was um, on my lunch hour, I worked before I, before I went to work, I worked. And after I got home, I worked and I worked on the weekends. Now I took Sunday off because I would burn out otherwise. But luckily my corporate job, because I told you when I went back to work, they weren't really giving me high powered projects. So most of the stuff I was doing was really pretty easy. So there were times when I would just take breaks and I would go do work in little 15 snippets, 15 minute snippets, because I wasn't doing anything. I was sitting at my desk twiddling my thumbs. Um, but you need to be disciplined. You need to stick to it. You need to be structured. You need to make sure you understand when you need to work on your business versus when you need to work for somebody else. Angela, what was it that you found you had missed upon starting your business? I did not calculate how much money I needed to make an hour. And we're going to talk more about that in just a minute, Angela. Uh, I, being, I had never been an hourly employee my entire life. I had never worked an hour uh, for a paycheck. I was a salaried employee. Right. So some works, some weeks I worked 40, some works, some weeks I worked 50, some, some weeks I worked 30, but I got paid the same amount. Uh, that was such an eye opening experience for me. And if for those of you who are salaried, it is definitely an eye opening experience. So make sure that you're committed, you're disciplined, you're structured. You need to have um, systems in place to make sure that you are, you know, using your time wisely. So, you know, I had to give up TV, which in the big scheme of things isn't that big of a deal, <laughs> but it's time it was. Um, and you need, you need to find time for learning and, and it, it is, it is, it is very doable, but it does take time. You know, make sure you have your schedule, make sure you have a support system, make sure people understand what you're going through. My dad thought I was crazy. He, you know, he was from the generation that you had the same job forever. I mean, he was with the same company until he retired and that's just not heard of anymore. And he thought I was nuts for leaving a corporate job for going to work for myself. But he supported me. He just thought I was nuts. Uh, but my coworkers thought I was crazy. Luckily, I found a friend who I had worked with for many years in a corporate capacity. She was a stay-at-home mom. Her son was now in school, and she wanted to start a business. And so her and I kind of started together, and we have been our support system ever since. And that works really well. Because let's face it, people who have a job don't understand what it's like to have your own business. They really don't. They don't understand the trials and tribulations. And that's why it's so important to be connected with other VAs, because we understand what we're going through. And so that's why it's real important to find a support system, whether it's local or virtual, find one. And then you need an exit strategy. This was where I failed miserably. <laughs> um you know, I didn't understand how much I needed to earn because I just figured, OK, well, because I'd been a consultant as well. I, you know, I kind of had a rough idea how much money I needed to make an hour, but I was wrong because I didn't put I didn't take into effect that you can't work 24 by 7. You can't work every week. Um, you know, you have to account for non billable hours versus just billable hours and see all that stuff was done for me when I was a consultant. So I really, really under valued myself, which a lot of people do. And you have to be very careful about that. So you really need to know how much you need to earn. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. And then you need to look at what expenses you can alleviate. Like I didn't need to get my dry cleaning done. I used to commute. Um, I live in, in Phoenix, which is a very large city. If you've ever been to Phoenix, it's, it's a very large city mileage wise. Um, I lived, um, Oh, I would say 35 miles from my office. <laughs> I had a commute. Plus I had to drop my kids off and pick them up. So my morning commute was anywhere from an hour to an hour and 15. My, my commute home was two hours every day. But, and I drive an SUV. So you can see my, my, my expenses would be gas and, and dry cleaning and lunches out, right? Or any other kinds of things, you know, and then I had to pay for some affiliates because I was a project management professional. I had to pay for some of that stuff. Anyway, there are things that you can um, definitely alleviate. So you have to have an exit strategy. You need to know what it is that you need to make and you need to know what expenses you will be cut. I also cut down on my nanny time. I didn't have to have my son at my nannies every day. So those are, you have to do your homework on that. Um, if you're working full time, be careful what you put on social media. If the company you work with or work for is on social media. Now I left my, my, um, just five years ago, actually it was five years ago in November, I left. Um, the company wasn't into social media at that time. 
they were on LinkedIn, but not really. So I wasn't so worried about that. But you need to do your research to find out what happens if they find that you're actually um, starting a business. What's going to happen to you? So, you know, be cautious when it comes to social media when you're trying to build your, your client base. And talk deadlines, not business hours. So if a client says, okay, you know, Angela, what hours do you work? It, it shouldn't matter to them what hours you work. It matters when you get the job done. So talk deadlines, not business hours. So that's a mind shift set right there, right? Because you can work whenever you want to. I had a client in New Zealand. She's my first client. Um, and, it, and it worked out really well because I could work on her stuff at night, which was in the middle of the day for her. But we never talked hours. We just talked deadlines, okay? All right, let's talk do's and don'ts. And I'll get more into the do's and don'ts of things you want to do. And remember, I'm coming from experience. I, you know, been there, done that. Um, do's. You need to have a basic understanding of marketing. Uh, bottom line here, right here. Marketing needs to be one of your, your um, great strengths. And I knew nothing about marketing. The only thing I ever marketed in my life was myself to get a new job. That's it. Marketing a business, whole different ballgame, whole different language. Um, and I learned this the hard way. First year I was in business, I didn't market myself at all. I, I had a website. It wasn't, a, and it wasn't WordPress. It was an HTML site. Um, but I was so hungry to get out of my job. I didn't care what I did. I just needed to get out. Looking back, I should have done it a lot differently. And that's what I'm trying to share with you. So get a basic understanding of marketing, such as a target audience, an ideal client, a marketing message. Your USP stands for unique selling point. We all have one. My unique selling point as a VA was I'm a, a PMP, which stands for Project Management Professional. It's a designation that you get um, from um, a company called Project Management Institute. Anyways, it's like a CPA, but it's for project management, right? there weren't more than one or two of us when I first started. That was my unique selling point. I have project management skills. And a lot of people who have corporate backgrounds understand what, what skill sets they have, PMPs have, in order to be a PMP. So that was kind of a calling card for me. And I had a lot of clients, believe it or not, who were also PMPs. So, you know, we understood each other. So everybody has their own unique selling point, And you have to find out what that is. Determine your hourly rate or packages. So important. You need to understand the difference between a salary and a business owner. You have to pay for everything when you're a business owner. You don't get vacation time. You don't get sick time. You don't get holiday time. If you're going to take time off, you have to figure out how to make that money if you're not working, especially if you're trading dollars for hours, which is how most people start. That's how I started. And, and I think, and this is my opinion, that all of us when we become VAs, we really need to start working hourly so we can understand what can be packaged and how much you can charge for packages because you need to know how long it takes you to do these tasks in order to package them together. So you really need to understand very clearly how much you need to earn in order to pay your bills. And then if you want to make money above and beyond that so you can take vacations and, and you know afford a new car, you need to understand how much you need to work and for how much you need to charge. That is a very eye-opening experience. And, and I'll talk to you about that one more time before we're done. And then market yourself. Never stop marketing. Even if you're at capacity, in other words, you're full, you need to keep marketing and you need to market locally. A lot of VAs hang, you know, they, they get a website, they get their name, they get some business cards, and then they sit behind their computer and they wait for clients to come to them. That's not how it works. Okay. I know I'm sure some of you may have heard of the law of attraction. It's just not that simple right? Just because you're open doesn't mean clients are going to come flooding in. You have to market yourself because how are they going to know about how wonderful you are unless you tell them? So you need to market locally. Get out in your neighborhood, go to local events, go to meetup.com, find something in your area and get out there and start talking to people. It's a great way to connect. You know, when I first started, I neglected doing that. And then I got a client who was, or who still is actually, the, um, the director for eWomen here in Phoenix. And I started going to meetings with her and that kind of took me to a whole new level. I got a whole bunch of clients and a whole bunch of exposure from that. So it does pay to actually get out of your house every so often too, when you're virtual and, you know, get out and, and talk business and, and have some fun. I'm sure you have processes, systems in place. You know, how do you, uh, what are your business policies, right? In other words, when do you invoice? How do you invoice? What tools do you use? You know, what is your um, 
client intake system? Do you charge extra fees for rush hour stuff? Do you work nights? Do you work weekends? All of that stuff should be in a business policies document. And then what tools do you use? How do you onboard a client? What contracts do you use? How do you get it signed? I mean, all that stuff should be very clear. And when you take on a new client, they should get a copy of your business policies document. Make sure you put yourself out there. You have to tell people who you are and what you offer. Otherwise, they're not going to know. This was some great um, advice that one of my clients gave me many years ago. She said, Susan, you have great skills and you have a lot to offer, but how in the world is anybody going to know unless you tell them? It is your job as a business owner to tell people how wonderful you are and how you can benefit them. That was a hard thing for me to get over, but you have to do it because otherwise, how are people going to know? It's your responsibility. If you want to be successful, that's, that's you know, you're going to have to push out there and get it done and then get some training or coaching. If you want to make more money, you need technical skills, bottom line. If you want to earn more an hour, you need to have more technology. You need to know one shopping cart. You need to know WordPress. You need to know how to do, how to work in a Weber or a MailChimp. Um, and, and coaching can help you with your confidence and your business. Okay. Yes, it does cost money, but you're investing in yourself and your business, which in turn invest in your long-term success. So those are some do's, some don'ts. Don't just open your business and wait for clients. Again, you can't just hang a shingle out like you used to in the old days, right? <laughs> and, and just people will find you. It doesn't work that way anymore, okay? Don't assume your rate. Do your homework. Understand how much you have to make to earn, you know, to pay your bills or to earn the, have the living that you want, right? You have to pay for taxes. You have to pay for your time off. You have to know how many hours per week you want to work. Do you want to work 40? And let me tell you right now, to bill 40 hours is not working 40 hours. To bill 40, it's probably to work 50 to 52. You work a lot more hours than you bill. And that's the nature. And I didn't realize that because I'd never worked an hour in my life. I always, always salary. I mean, I worked, but I was always salary. Don't waste your time on a business plan. And I'm sure some people are thinking I'm crazy, but that's okay. Don't because a business plan, the business plans that are out there are usually for brick and mortar businesses or somebody who needs financing. You don't need that. Spend your time on a marketing plan because marketing is what's going to get you clients, not the business plan. The business plan is if you're going to go to a bank and say, I need financing to open, you know, to buy a franchise. It's good to have a rough sketch of a business plan, but don't do it. I wasted my time with that. And I'm like, well, that was a waste of time. I really needed to do a marketing plan, but I didn't even know what a marketing plan was at that time. And don't recite your resume to people. They don't care what you do. That's blunt, but it's true. They just want to know how you benefit them. What's in it for me? So if you've ever tried this, if you've ever gone to somebody and say, hey, I'm a virtual assistant, they may look at you like, what? Most people don't know what that means. So instead, if you come to them and you say, well, I save online business owners, you know, five hours a week by taking over their administrative tasks, then you've got somebody's attention. So you need to come up with a benefit statement versus your resume, right? You're not, it's not a job. It's different. And that's something I had to learn too. Okay. So those are some don'ts that, again, you really, you'll learn this as you go. This is all the stuff that I learned as I go. You know, really the big ones for me were all, well, not the top one, because I really was out looking for clients, but th these, these three, assume my rate, create a business plan and recite my resume. I did all those things. And I'm like, well, that was a waste of my time. So I wasted a good year before I truly understood what it was I was doing. And I don't recommend that. I recommend you shortcut that as quickly as possible because then you'll make more money quickly. Okay, so for some tips on, I gave you some tips on getting out of your own way, analysis paralysis, right? Set a deadline and then take action on your research, whatever it is, but do not compare yourself to others because you don't know where they're at in their business, right? Because they could be 10 steps ahead of you. How to gain confidence, get a support system and latch on, ask for help, ask a mentor, ask if somebody will mentor you or coach you. Like I said, there's lots of us out there. Ask. Um, and I'll be honest, every, every person that I've mentored, they asked me, I didn't volunteer. They came to me. And because that shows me that they're serious with their business, they came to me and said, Susan, would you consider? And if I wasn't doing it right now, I said, well, I can't do it now, but I can do it in a month or two months or whatever it might be. So ask. Change your employee mindset. That's really big. Mindset's key in everything you do. Um, but you really have to understand that you're the boss. You don't have to ask for permission. You don't have to tell people details. All you have to say is, you know what? I'm not available. They don't need to know why. You don't work for them. I had to put that on my 
bulletin board. I don't work for them <laughs> because I kept coming back to that. Um, you know, building while employed, you have to be disciplined and structured and you have to really want it in order to make it work. Depending on how much time and effort depends on how quickly you can leave your job. Like I said, I wanted out of there so bad. I was willing to do whatever it took and for however long it took so I could leave. And then some do's and don'ts for you. And again, these are based on my experience. These are my opinions. Um, but this is what worked for me. Now, I want to introduce you to a program that I'm just opening up starting today. I actually have this program going right now. It's, a, it's called the VA Starter Kit Group Coaching Program. And it is to take struggling VAs, whether you've been in business two years or two months, and to really give you a basic understanding of how to build your business, and how to get clients, and how to make money. Um, this will be the fourth group that I've done. It's truly fun. And I will, I am proud to say that several of my clients that were employed full time when they started my coaching program have now quit their job and are now full time and have more business than they know what to do with. So if you struggle with any of the things we talked about, plus these other items, you know, how to find clients, how to get clients, how to market, um, you know, just how to, what to offer, what to charge, all of this. We, I go through this. This is a six month program. And the program we meet three times every month for six months. To the first two weeks of the month, we, we are actually learning together. And then the, the third week, we are actually having an open Q&A call where we can talk about anything we want to talk about. This is a great program. And it is very inexpensive compared to some of the other programs out there. It's only $69 a month for six months, which is about $2.30 a day, which is only $414 and for what you get, one client will easily pay for this program when it's only $414. Now, the program, again, is $69 per month. So you don't have to pay for it all up front. You can pay for it by month or you can pay for it all at once. Um, if you'll go to vastarterkit.com, there's the sign up form. There's a lot more information. There's lots of testimonials up there. So you can see that this program does work. It is only limited to 25, though. And the reason I keep it small is because I truly get to know each one of you. Um, um, we have our own Facebook group. Uh, I'm in there constantly. And I also answer and help you with email support. So I am truly available to you as well. So that's why I keep it at 25. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do that. So real quick, if you'll hang with me, this is the details. So you get two 75-minute live training webinars per month. We use GoToWebinar, like I'm doing here. You get a 90-minute Q&A, which is live. Um, you get templates, worksheets, best practices. So you get a lot of documents that I use in my own business. I give those to you as part of the program. We get our own private Facebook page, which is just for us. You have monthly accountability worksheets, partners. You have monthly accountability, well, I can't talk, monthly accountability worksheets. You also have monthly homework. And you also have a, a partner. Um, as part of the program, you have to have either one or, or multiple partners because you, I give you homework and you need to get it done. Um, so if you're not ready to really invest in yourself and your business, this program isn't for you because I expect you to actually work and I expect you to keep moving forward. Everything is recorded so you can keep them and listen to them again. So they are for years for you to keep, as I mentioned, email support with from me. And this is actually, a, a, if you're looking to get certified as a VA, this is a VA certified program, which means you have to actually do the homework and the homework is part of your certification. If you complete all the homework and I review it and you pass it, then you'll get a certification. If you don't, you still get an emblem will say that you did take this training program. So like I said, if you go to vastarterkit.com to sign up, it is limited to the first 25. And I will say from experience, these programs, they, they fill up pretty quickly. If you miss the one in January, then I'll probably have another one starting in February, but they do fill up rather quickly. Um, but I try to start one every month or so. So if you, for some reason, can't start in January, you know, look for more information for me, probably for one coming in February. A couple other items real quick. Um, as you all know, I do free training. I also not only coach, but I also teach technology and I'll be adding some new dates in January for my, um, upcoming free training webinars. And that website is techiementerlabs.com. And one of my goals over... <laughs> Over the next uh, couple of weeks is to consolidate all of my websites into one, which will be great because I have so many right now. Anyway, a few other things and I'll, I'll um, open it up for questions. For those of you who are who need contracts or you really need to know how to figure out what rate you need to charge, I have several kits on my website that are for sale. They're $14.99 or less. I have a marketing kit that will give you all the marketing materials you need to create your own marketing plan. I have a welcome packet that will give you 
um, contracts, business policies, all kinds of templates, and a startup checklist. Now, if you're going to join my training, this coaching program, you don't need to buy these because they will come with the program. If you're not, these are really inexpensive ways to give you some systems and some templates to help you continue with your business, especially the rate one is most important. So you can go to techiemanner.com for that. So sorry, three websites already. <laughs> and so vastarterkit.com is for the group coaching program. Techiemannerlabs.com is for my coach or my training programs. And techiemanner.com is for all my virtual assistant kits and, and coaching. I also have one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring packages. So if you don't want to sign up for this, I can actually, you can actually get coaching from me anywhere from 30 minutes to four hours. Um, and you can, if you purchase a couple hours, you can use those in 30 minute increments. I do have a level two of this VA starter kit program coming out in late January. So for anybody who's been in business for a while, who needs information on how to raise your rates, put together packages, um, create a team, um, any of those things, that's what the next um, VA starter kit group coaching program will be about. So a little more advanced topics. And then lastly, I'm so excited to tell you guys are the first people I've told. I'm actually rolling all of my um, programs under what's called the VA Training Labs, which is going to be a one-stop shop for virtual assistants. It's basically going to be coaching, do-it-yourself kits, and technology training. So everything you need to start a VA business and get coaching and technology training, and that's coming in January. So I'm all excited about that. And that's where I'm going to consolidate all of my websites. Phew. So what questions can I answer for you now? Sorry, had to go through my little spiel. Any questions or comments? I'd love to hear your thoughts if this was helpful, if you found any more information that you could implement for yourself. Did I lose you? Are you still there? Gail, okay, good. That was super helpful and I appreciate the time you took to go through all of this. Thank you for staying and listening. Gail, I appreciate that. Marilyn, what are your suggestions for websites and domains? Good question. So my advice to you is I would do self-hosted, which means like HostGator or um, Bluehost or HostMonster, not GoDaddy. Um, GoDaddy is a great place to buy domain names, but I wouldn't host a website there. And I would have a WordPress site, Marilyn. Um, WordPress is the way to go. And that's one other thing I forgot to mention. Um, I actually have a, a two things. I'll tell you guys. I haven't even published this yet, but I'll tell I'll everybody here. Two things. I have a um, what I call a VA, VA website in a box. You can get a full WordPress website self-hosted for less than five hundred dollars. Um, and I work with you on that. And I'm actually having a discount of fifty dollars, so it'll be four fifty to get a WordPress site. And I'm also having a huge sale on all my technology training courses. So if you need to learn WordPress or one shopping cart, or project management, or anything like that, I'm going to have a 25% off sale starting tomorrow. So just keep that in mind. Jan, thank you. Great stuff. Congratulations on the growth of your business so far. Thank you, Jan. That's very kind. Um, thank you. Thank you. It's fun. I love it. Angela, thank you for everything tonight. I have all my systems set up in a but I'm now struggling with getting myself known. Any suggestions, please? What are you doing, Angela, to get yourself known? Are you getting out locally in the community and talking to people? Because that really is helpful. And by the way, if anybody is interested in that VA website in a box, you can go to techiemanner.com. It's, um, it's under VA products. But it is a great website. If you need a website, that's a great way to get started. I'm not a designer, but it is a great um a great starter website. And there are some links on there for some other websites I've done for VAs. So Angela, if you're not lo marketing locally, that is the first thing that you can do is you need to get out there. The other thing you need to do on social media is get into groups where your clients hang out. So don't be in just VA groups unless VAs are your clients. Get into, you know, solopreneur groups or coaching groups or, or or whatever your ideal client is and find out where they're at and then start posting valuable information. Angela, I've done quite a lot of different networks and I'm on various groups. I think it could be how I'm promoting myself that I'm struggling with. How are you promoting yourself? Are you giving tips and tricks or are you just doing salesy stuff? Sorry, I needed a drink. <laughs> 
um, Angela, that, yeah, that could be the problem. Um, well, I, my advice to you is, is find out what your ideal client needs and give them, give them tips around that. Cause that'll really help them draw. Do you blog? Blogging is another thing you can do. And by the way, if you're not blogging, I'm having a blogging challenge in my VA um, group on Facebook that you can you can get on and we're really going to start pushing each other. So, Angela, why don't you join the VA Tips and Tricks group on Facebook and get get in the blogging group and, and join the group and we can help you, you know, at least start getting to blogging will really drive traffic to your website. Marilyn, I'm enrolled in your EM 101 series right now. I'm currently an executive VA, but no, I need more skills. Does your VA starter kit group coaching include technology training? Ah, oh, Marilyn, you're brilliant. Um, actually, I am going to roll out um, in January, and I'm, I haven't finished the details on this, but I will tell you, I am rolling out um, a VA starter kit group coaching program that will include some technology training. Now, the monthly fee is obviously going to be higher. Instead of $69, it will be $99. But you will get um, four different training programs. You get four different classes for that, which is well worth the money because most of my classes are about 100 bucks a piece. Some are more. Um, so if you're interested in that one, you might want to hold off. I just have to finish the sales page for it, to be honest. But So that will be $99 a month, and you will get the same coaching but you will also get some training. Angela, I have just, I've joined the blogging group and the VA tips and tricks group. Great. I will look for you in there and make sure that they're in Maryland. Thank you. Woohoo. Yeah, I, I, I do want to roll my coaching and, and technology training together. I'm just kind of figuring that out. So if, if anybody listening here wants to wait and join the other program, it will be $99 a month um, for six months. Um, and I may actually make it longer. I may actually instead, Marilyn, make it eight months because you have so much homework that you're doing with the group coaching program. If you take classes too, you might get overwhelmed. I have to figure that out. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. Good. Yeah, I will definitely be doing um, technology training. Yeah, and, and the VA Training Labs is going to have not only, you know, as I said, everything, but I'm also going to have a membership um, a membership component, which will be um, $20 a month, which will also include, you know, free training um, once a month and some other tips and tricks. Marilyn, I'm so new and green and need lots of help. Well, I'm here to help. That's what I love to do. So if anybody else joins the um, any of my groups, make sure you say hi so I know you're there and I can make sure I add you to the blogging challenge if you would like to join. So as I mentioned, this group is going to be opening in January. It's actually January. The first get together is January 9th. Um, and I wanted to say thank you and happy holidays because I can't believe Christmas is <laughs> not far away. But thank you. Um, you know, please check back. I really do want to have a one stop shop for uh, VAs who are really looking to get their business starting and continue training because that's what I love to do. Thank you. Marilyn, happy holidays to everybody as well. Any other questions or comments? Anything else I can help you with? And if you know anybody who would benefit from this, please feel free to share it with them, whether it's the group coaching, the kits, the website, or any of the training. Gail, I joined the Facebook. I'm waiting your acceptance. Look forward to hearing from you via email. This was a great kickstart. Great. That's what I wanted it to be was a great kickstart. Any other questions or comments? I am a stickler for time. So anybody who takes my programs know that I always start and end on time. Years of corporate experience. <laughs> but you don't get penalized for coming in late. I won't make you sing or anything like that. Okay. Well, thank you again, everybody, for your time today. I would love to see you in one of my programs. Go take a look at vastarterkit.com. Take a look at the page, take a look at the testimonials, and grab a seat before it fills up. Otherwise, I'll look for you guys, Marilyn especially, in um, the course coming in January, which will be the $99 one um, that will include technology training. Structure is good. I'm a corporate baby too. Yeah, I, I can't get rid of some of that stuff. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Go and enjoy your holidays. Uh, I hope to see you in January. So thanks again. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.